Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing great. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Shivika Sethi, a national level faculty of microbiology and the author of the review book, Mastering Microbiology for All PG Entrants and Academics. Today, we're going to go through the images of the eggs of cestodes and the intestinal nematodes seen in stool specimens. So amongst the cestodes, that is the tapeworms, we are going to be seeing the eggs of Hymenolepis nana, Hymenolepis diminuta, Tinea solium, Tinea saginata, and Diphylobotrium latum. Of course, you're not going to see the eggs of um, Echinococcus because the eggs are not present in human stool specimens. The eggs of Echinococcus are present in dog feces because dog is the definitive host in Echinococcus. Moving on, we are going to see the eggs of the in, uh, intestinal nematodes, that is the intestinal roundworms, those found in the large and the small intestines. So let's start with the cestode eggs seen in stool specimens. The first amongst which is the dwarf tapeworm or Hymenolepis nana, the most common cestode infections in humans. So H. nana, the egg, is about 30 to 50 microns in size. It's rounded. Can you appreciate? There is an outer shell and an inner shell. Between the outer and inner shell, you can see polar filaments. So these small, small filaments that you can see originating from at the poles, there are polar thickenings. So these polar thickenings are filaments are emerging from the polar thickenings and also we can appreciate some yolk granules between the two shells inside further inside the inner shell we can see the oncosphere which has six hooks so it is also called as the hexacanth oncosphere right so h nana 30 to 50 micron sized eggs remember this is very very important what is the morphology the polar thickenings the polar filaments and the yolk granules which are seen between the two shells and inside the inner shell we can see the hexacanth oncosphere then moving on to the rat tapeworm or hymenolepis diminuta in case man becomes the host the eggs which are found in stool specimens are larger 70 to 85 microns in size there is an outer shell and an inner shell. Between these two, there is nothing special. Sometimes we can see some refractile granules, but all the polar filaments, the yolk granules, the polar thickenings, all of them are missing. And within the inner shell, we can see the hexacanth oncosphere. Okay, so six hooks in the oncosphere. You can appreciate a few of them, like these are the hooks of the oncosphere. Right, so this does with Hymenolepis nana and diminuta. Next, we move on to Tinea solium and Tinea saginata. Tinea solium or the pork tapeworm and Tinea saginata, which is the beef tapeworm. The eggs are absolutely similar in intestinal teniasis due to either of them. They are, it, these eggs are 30 to 45 microns in size, rounded. The oncosphere, that is the hexacanth oncosphere, is surrounded by a typical radially striated embryophore or the radially striated shell, which is also called as the corona radiata. Can you appreciate these radiations in this shell? Okay, so 30 to 50 microns radially striated embryophore, which is enclosing the oncosphere, which has six hooks both these eggs are absolutely similar next we move on to the longest tapeworm infecting man that is the diphylobotrium latum or the broad tapeworm or the fish tapeworm when this the adult tapeworms are found in the small intestines the eggs are passed out in the stool these eggs unlike the other cestoid eggs that we have seen they have an operculum so that's the operculum which is opening up to release the cora cedium when the egg is passed out from the uh, patient uh, from the host okay now these eggs the ab opercular end that has a small knob 
okay so this knob if you remember if you seen the trematode eggs these kinds of knobs are also seen in clonorchis and opisthorchis okay but there the eggs were very very tiny they were just 27 to 35 microns in size okay so these are much larger and operculum again is present right so amongst the cestoid eggs remember the exception is delatum which produces operculated eggs all the others are non operculated in contrast in trematodes what was there all of them were operculated except the schistosomes which are non operculated eggs right so next we move on to the eggs of intestinal nematodes that is we are going to be studying the large intestinal nematodes that is Enterobius vermicularis and Trichuris trichura and small intestinal nematode eggs like Ascaris, the hookworms and the strongyloides. Right. So let's move on. Let's start with Ascaris lumbricoides, the longest uh, roundworm found in the human intestines. First, for remember in Ascaris infection, we can see in the stool two types of eggs fertilized and unfertilized eggs so this in in front of you is at present the fertilized egg which is a single ovum which is surrounded by a thick shell okay which has lots of mammalations on its surface okay so thick shell with mammalations surrounding an unsegmented ovum this egg is bile stained and it is about 45 to 75 microns in size Okay, so that is fertilized eggs. Very rarely we can also see that instead of just the unsegmented ovum, you can see the early cleavage of the ovum. So you can see that it is dividing into two parts, but this is rare. Moving on, sometimes this fertilized egg of Ascaris can lose its outer thick shell. So this kind of shell, you can see a transparent shell enclosing the unsegmented ovum. This is the decorticated egg of Ascaris. It has lost its outer shell. Then also along with that, the fertilized eggs, we can see unfertilized eggs, which are slightly larger in size. The fertilized ones were up to 75 microns. These are about up to 90 microns in size. Similar thick shell with mammalations, but this is unfertilized. So sometimes you can appreciate that it isn't atrophied ovum and you can see a few refractile granules okay so even the unfertilized egg may have mammalations or it may become decorticated losing its outer shell right so ascaris or the common roundworm the longest roundworm in the human small intest in the human intestines two kinds of eggs fertilized and unfertilized eggs okay which may be uh, sometimes decorticated. Next is the hookworms Ankylostoma duodenale and Nicator americanus. Here the eggs are non bile stained. Okay, I'll summarize the bile stained and non bile stained eggs right at the end of our discussion. Right now, these eggs are 60 to 75 microns in size, oval in shape. It's a very, very thin shell remember ascaris was such a thick shell this is a very thin shell transparent and you can see that the ovum has started to undergo segmentation so you can appreciate either four or eight blastomers inside the shell right so this is the hookworms non bile stained 60 to 75 microns a very thin transparent shell enclosing the four to eight blastomers Next is Trichuris trichura. So this now we moved on to the large intestinal nematodes. Again, the egg is very, very typical. It is a barrel shaped egg. In microbiology, remember two barrels. One is barrel shaped egg of Trichuris. The other is barrel shaped arthrospores of Coccidioides emitis and Posadasi. Okay, so barrel shaped eggs and there is, it's an unsegmented ovum. So it is yet not developed into the larva has not developed and you can see the bipolar mucus plugs okay 50 to 55 microns barrel shaped eggs with bipolar mucus plugs very typical of trichuris moving on to enterobius 
Now remember, enterobius or the pinworm, threadworm or seat worm, the eggs are not seen in stool specimen. Why? Because these eggs are laid by the female worm on the perianal skin. Okay, so though I may be at present talking about the stool eggs, but this is on the perianal skin. So how do we demonstrate these eggs? By NIH swab or the scotch tape technique. So these eggs are also non-bile stained, 50 to 60 microns in size. These are typical oval or sometimes plano convex eggs. And you can see that there is a folded larva inside. So it is already larvated. The larva has developed, so it is already infectious to man. Okay. So enterobius vermicularis, eggs, remember, not seen in stool, but on the perianal skin. Next is Strongyloides turcoralis. Okay, now this is also unique. I've put the unique ones right at the end. Strongyloides, you don't see eggs in stool. The reason is because the uh, worms are ovoviviparous. The moment the eggs are laid in the intestines, they hatch into rhabdidae form larva. So that is what you're going to see in the patient's stool specimen, which are 180 to 380 microns in size. These are seen in the stool under the microscope. And this is a closer look of the anterior end of the rhabdidae form larvae. So you can see that there is a short buccal cavity. So this short buccal cavity helps us to differentiate it from the rhabdidae form larva of the hookworms. Okay, when, so when the eggs of hookworms, they hatch outside the host, the, they have a long buccal cavity. Okay, and the, can you see the esophagus has a bulge over here? So you can see a esophageal bulb. I'll show you on the next slide a further detail. This tells us that this is rhabdidae form larva, not the phyllary form larva of Strongyloides turcoralis. Okay, I'm repeating once more Strongyloides, an exception, it's an ovoviviparous roundworm. So the eggs are not seen in stool. We are going to see rhabdidae form larvae, which are 180 to 380 microns in size. These kinds of structures you're going to see. They have a short buccal cavity and they have a flask shaped esophagus. You can see a bulge over here. Okay, let's see. See, that kind of esophagus is called as rhabditoid esophagus. So, this is how we can differentiate the phyllary form larva, which is the infective form for man in strongyloides from the rhabdidae form larva, which is the diagnostic stage seen in stool specimen. So, this is on an average 250 microns. This is double the length. This has this kind of rhabdidae, rhabdidae, rhabdidae form esophagus. You can see it's a flask-shaped esophagus. Whereas here you can't see any of that bulge. So it's called as a phyllary form esophagus. And phyllary form larva of strongyloides, the posterior end, the tail is, shows a bifurcation. So it's a notched tail, right? So this finishes our intestinal nematodes and the cestodes, right? So at the end, let me quickly go through some important things to remember, which are the non-bile stained eggs. These are the hookworms, Nicator americanus and Ankylostoma duodenale and Enterobius vermicularis and Hymenolepis nana. Okay, remember this species, the eggs are non-bile stained. Remember the polar filaments one? The Hymenolemis diminuta, the eggs are bile stained in that species. Okay, so you can use this mnemonic N E H A to remember which are the ones which produce non bile stained eggs. Basically, it's a property of the outer covering of the egg to take up the brown color. Okay, now another thing to remember here is which are the eggs that do not float in a saturated salt solution? Now, now, what is the reason we need to remember this is when we do the stool concentration techniques, which are of two types, flotation techniques and sedimentation techniques. So when we use this flotation technique, generally we use the saturated salt solutions. So most of the eggs found in the stool specimens will float onto the top. 
but when but the heavier ones will settle at the bottom so which are the heavier ones and obviously they are not floating these are the eggs of tinea the ones we just saw then the intestinal fluke eggs all the eggs which are found of trematodes in the stool specimens you know the fasciolopsis gastrodiscoides the clonarches the fasciola at all those will not float they are heavy and lastly the unfertilized egg of ascaris these are all heavy eggs they do not float in a saturated salt solution when we are doing the flotation technique of concentration of the stool specimen okay so this does with our session today if you benefited from this small session please do not forget to press the like button and if you have not subscribed to my channel yet please do so for further more uh, informatory videos